Well, all right, all right. Well, today I'm doing something a little different as far as videos go. Uh, I'm actually going to work on my Suburban. And, and I work on cars quite a bit. I mean, we have a Suburban here. Uh, this Miata, it's the, the first year it came out with, what was it, a 90 or 91? 90, I believe. Um, oh, what else? Uh, F, F-150s, uh, a minivan, a Mazda 6, is it? I mean, we have a quite a few cars, and I have a, a, a Mountaineer back there that I, I need to work on one of these days that uh, it needed a new uh, torque converter on it. And uh, I rebuilt the uh, transfer case on it, and it was kind of a freak accident. But uh, but I came down to it where I just need to uh, to replace the torque converter, and I was backing out the. Uh, I got everything disconnected. I was ready to drop the transmission, and I just have it up on jacks. I don't have a you know two post lift and all that good stuff. And that was about the time uh, when I started having back problems, and. It's been sitting there ever since. I, it's ready to come out. There's only like two, maybe three bolts holding that thing on. And I just had to put it aside until uh, until I get better. And it was like, man, I mean, the great thing, I, it would be perfect if I knew somebody with uh, two post lift or something where I can get it up in the air and, uh, and drop the transmission that way. It would probably be a lot easier on my back instead of, you know, laying on the ground and scooting around trying to you know move everything around but it's a it's a 97 mountaineer and it has uh you know the 5.0 in it uh i i drove it off the lot in 97 and i still have it i really like that machine uh, i know i've seen a lot of them used in the past that uh could have got them dirt cheap right but i think the prices seem like they've been going up. I guess that's with with all used cars these days. The prices have gone up, but but everybody I know of that's looking for that Mountaineer, they're they're looking at they're looking for the engine. Actually, um, it's a pretty nice uh, V8. Uh, just the five liter they put in there. It's it's pretty nice. Uh, pretty nice engine. But okay, I'm starting to ramble there, but. In the meantime, I have this Suburban, and it's a 98, and I've done quite a bit of work on it, and didn't feature hardly anything. I think I made a video for, you know, changing the rear shocks over uh, to coil spring shocks, and that helped a lot, because I do tow a lot with it. And, uh, but, well, let's take a look. So, there she blows, and uh, has about 260,000 miles on it. But, believe it or not, it's my daily driver these days. And I did a lot of work when I first got it years, years ago. Uh, who knows, five years ago. And, uh, and I replaced all, all the, uh, the fuel injectors. Um, in the rear, I replaced the fuel pump uh, twice in the rear. Uh, oh, gosh, what else? You can see this. AC compressor is brand new. That's what I'm going to be working on today is the AC. Uh, but I forget what else. Uh, new plugs, wires, uh, uh, suspension-wise up here in the front, um, the pitman arm and the idler arm, uh, the tie rods, uh, just everything under there. Uh, what else? I know I did a lot of stuff. Oh, the ignition wise, uh, put a new coil. Um, so this one still has the uh, back there. You see the distributor cap and rotor. I just switched that over about a month ago, and uh, runs pretty good. I forget what else I've done to this. I mean, so here I am about to replace. There's the new condenser, right? So I just have to take the grill off and it should be pretty easy access to uh, to get to it and and the reason why I think that's the problem I mean last year I had replaced the compressor uh, the accumulator here um, orifice tube 
and then of course what I just showed you the evaporator and what I found out let's see so I think there's a lot of crap clogging up the condenser because when I took off the orifice tube you can see how much crap is, is still in there this was the new one the other one I took out was even worse and when I took this one off I was like man there, there's still some crap in there so so there's probably uh, if you turn the AC on of course the input to it will be hot going out will be a little cooler um, but as you scan across you'll probably see you know little spots where it's not transferring uh, temperature across and uh, and that's because it's little spots where it's clogged so I don't think enough is uh, is getting through here because when I turn the AC on this side is still cold still warm here it passes through the orifice tube and it gets cold but up here it's cool it's not enough right so I am going to replace the condenser and holy cow it's so freaking humid out here it's 9 a.m. and you know I had to clean off the lenses on the camera it was all fogging up and and it's supposed to get up over a hundred again today so yeah so hopefully I will uh, get this AC running this morning uh, before it gets too hot again I mean it's Yesterday had to been the, the hottest day of the year so far. So, well, I'm going to get to it um, and get started on this. This should be pretty easy. The grill comes off pretty easy and uh, should have good, clear access to the, uh, uh, to the condenser there. And uh, so after all, it's just an input and output and probably about four bolts holding that thing together. So, so I'll get this done and we'll see if the AC is working. Alright, let's get this grill off. Should be one, two. Uh, there's some bolts under here. And with this old thing, I think there were a few missing. So. lights back here. There she goes. So you can see it's just sliding back here. All the bolts are up here. And uh, pretty easy. I think I have some new bulbs I might put up in here. Uh, be a little brighter while I have this off. But anyway. Okay, well here's the condenser. So this uh, Yeah, we'll see how easy it is to slide out. This is the transmission cooler, no doubt. But if I unbolt it here and get it slightly out of the way, get these two off, and we'll see which way it can slide out. So I was looking at the hoses here. You can see this is a, an old Harbor Freight, US General. But you can see my knobs here, they, they broke apart a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, I had to put new fittings on this one. Uh, the old one from Harbor Freight, it was giving me, it was leaking and I didn't know. So I never could get a, a good reading off these dials, especially the low side. So I got these aftermarket. They work like a charm so far. These two, they had broken, uh, just 
cracked apart and everything, so I 3D printed. Didn't have blue, so I just printed it black. But uh, let's see. There we go. Yeah, so I 3D printed these as replacements, and they work pretty good. I might change it a bit. This one's a little loose. So, but if you need them, uh, let me know. I will post them where you can grab the 3D file and, uh, and print it off yourself. Or I guess if you want to buy a set of them, then let me know. I'll have them available. Isn't that something? Did you hear that? It should have been empty and all of a sudden, poof, all of a sudden it just let go. So it was definitely clogged up in there somewhere. I'm going to take this light off over here. bad huh this one feels a little heavier it looks a little wider than this replacement one if you ask me yeah look how much slimmer this one is well as long as it works Let's see how that go in. There we go. 
Alright, the rest of this should bolt right in just like we took it off. I'm going to put these braces in first. bright and shiny. It goes onto this pipe. You can see from here up to here. So you put the orifice tube in here and that is where it's hot here and as it transfers over and transfers to a liquid then it gets ice cold. So it has to pass through that such a little part that that can really make a difference on your AC, you know? Well, I'm going to slide this one in. Well, that's that. Let's get this vacuum pump hooked up. Good old uh, free rental from O'Reilly. Comes in handy. So we hook up the yellow tube here. And we'll be opening these, is that right? These are tight. So the pump is on, it's working. You can see the steam coming out. And it's coming from both the low and the high ends. And you see on the dials, it's already starting to, to make its way towards the negative numbers but uh, but you want to run this for a while and then when I turn this off and uh, and close these off then I'll let it sit for a little while longer and make sure there's no leaks right if there's a leak then you'll see the dials coming back around here see the zero and it's already pegging down at minus one same here so so it's doing its job. I think the last time I was trying to vacuum the system, that's when I had the bad fitting and I wasn't really getting a good vacuum on it. It was really tough to tell. So, all right, well, we'll let that go. And I don't hear anything. Those are the three spots that I'd, but I put new O-rings on it. I guess I'll go ahead and put it together. I'm getting impatient. I'll go ahead and put the grill back on while this is vacuuming out. I'm pretty confident there's no leaks. And uh, we're getting there. All right, so you can see I closed these off and I turned the pump off. And the gauges are still down here in the negative. And I'm going to let it sit there for a second and make sure if there's a leak, we'll see it, you know, it'll lose its vacuum. But uh, I'll let it sit for about 10 minutes. All right, just put this on there. So what I'm going to do, I want to get even the air out of this hose. 
right? So when I close this down uh, and press this up against the can, it'll let the Freon out. Well, I'm going to, on the Schrader valve, just get something to, to push it in. And it'll shove the air out. Once you see it start coming out of the top, then you know all your air is out of the hose. So, pretty simple. open. There we go. So now all the air is out of the hose and I'm ready to uh, start loading up. On this side, so you can see the clutch is starting to cycle. And here on the other side of the orifice tube, I can already feel it cold on this side. So that's good, everything's working so far. I think that is it. Yeah, I can really feel it cold up here. All right, I've got AC now. Everything seems to be right on. Yeah, that's about right. 25 and 30 up here on the low side. 175, 180-ish. Actually, I'd like to see it up to 200. But it all depends on the ambient air, right? Because right now it's uh, it's pretty warm outside. But not as hot as some days. So, well, I'm going to see how this runs like this for a while. And uh, if it needs a little more, I'll add a little more. But we'll see. Well, that's it. So you can see it's pretty easy to, to install that condenser. It's uh, Everything's right there when you take the grill off, and uh, and it's actually pretty easy. I've spent more time, you know, flushing out the system and, uh, you know, getting a good vacuum on it and, and putting new uh, coolant in it. But I always use that same procedure, right? Um, and with this one... Uh, that was the last component needed. Last year I put a new compressor on there, uh, a new accumulator, and even uh, uh, the evaporator. So this is like a whole new system, <laughs> except for the hoses, I guess. But, uh, but that is it. So I'm sure I'll be working on this thing some more. Um, it's a 98, has a high mileage, but Man, I mean, it, it runs really well. It's my, it's actually my daily driver right now until I can get my Mountaineer fixed. Uh, but we'll see. Once I, I feel uh, healthy enough to handle a transmission, uh, then I'll go ahead and, and work on it. Unless somebody out there knows somebody with some lifts or where I can bring it into a shop and do it, that would be fantastic. I'll film it and, uh, uh, and get that sucker running. But, uh, but anyway, I guess that's it for this video. So, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video.